Over the years, Reddit has become one of the most popular social media sites on the internet, garnering a user base of over 400 million monthly active users. The site paved the way for itself with its forum style discussion structure similar to other sites like Discord and Quora. Recently, Reddit has been in the news due to its blackouts held by popular moderators of various subreddits in protest of the company's recent API changes. Some are saying this could be the potential downfall of Reddit as they continue to make the necessary moves in order to grow as a company, but at the same time, they're hurting the community that's made the site what it is today. Reddit is continuing to ramp up pressure on mods to put an end to these protests, but in order to understand what's happening now, let's take it back to the beginning. The inception of Reddit all began in 2005 with college roommate Steve Huffman, also known as Spez, and Alexis Ohanian, who were both students at the University of Virginia. Huffman was a computer science student, and Ohanian studied history and business. The two were a part of a startup accelerator called Y Combinator, which was essentially a cohort-based program where students could come up with ideas for startups. These accelerators were pretty difficult to get into, as the acceptance rates were typically between 1 and 3%. Their very first project was called My Mobile Menu, thought of by Huffman. And the idea was to make it so that you can order food on your phone via SMS messaging. As we know, this would become a thing in the future, but the idea was almost too ahead of its time as the idea would fail to get investment. Around this time, sites like Google and YouTube were just starting out as it was the dawn of the internet era. With people becoming more engaged online, the two noticed the rise in internet culture that was developing. They came up with the idea to create sort of a centralized hub where people could discuss things that were happening. A site that would serve as the front page for the internet. The site would initially be named Snoo, but then would later be changed to what it is now. Ohanian came up with the name and it served as a play on words as I read it on Reddit. After gaining investment for the idea, the site would officially be launched in June of 2005. The following year, in 06, Reddit merged with Infogamy, another Y Combinator project. As part of that merger, they brought on a new co-founder named Aaron Swartz. Swartz was known as a computing prodigy as when he was just 12 years old, he created a user-generated encyclopedia called the Info Network. This move proved to be a success as shortly after the merger, Reddit's popularity and user base began to rise dramatically. Now, although the site was finding success, there was some turmoil beginning to brew within its offices. Swartz and Spez had very different worldviews regarding the internet. Swartz viewed it in a more political aspects, seeing it as a way to hold governments and organizations accountable, as well as a way to maintain free speech. Spaz saw it through a capitalistic lens as a way to gain wealth and make profit. In late 2006, Reddit was sold to Condé Nast Publications for a reported 10 to $20 million, relocating the team to San Francisco. For most, this would serve as a win, but Swartz was concerned about the corporate influence plaguing the company and struggled with the transition overall. In a blog post, he complained about their new corporate environment, stating, it was it wasn't until I started working in an office that the question begun to make sense. Since I moved to San Francisco, I literally haven't gotten anything done. I haven't finished a book. I finished three on the plane out here. I haven't answered many emails. I used to answer hundreds a day. I've written only a couple blog posts. I used to do one a day and I haven't written a line of code. I used to write whole programs in the evening. It's a pretty incredible state of affairs. Some would attribute his public dissatisfaction to his eventual exit from Reddit as he would eventually get himself fired in 2007 by not showing up to work. This would mark the end of an era with its original co-founders as Spez and Ohanian would leave Reddit and go on to pursue other ventures shortly after. After his departure, Swartz became heavily involved in political activism. His first major playing doing so was with PACER, which stands for Public Access to Court Electronic Records. If you need access to any federal court records in the US, you need to go through PACER's database to do so. These documents should in theory be part of the public domain, but instead it was put behind a paywall. Each page costs about 10 cents and it's a multi-million dollar a year system. It was Carl Malamud, the founder of publicresource.org, who created the call to action. He wanted people to send him downloaded federal court documents from a series of free pacer libraries around the country. That way he could distribute them for public use. Swartz was one who answered the call and with some computer script magic he proceeded to download 2.7 million documents from pacer's database. It was a remarkable feat and this obviously wouldn't go unnoticed as this would catch the attention of the FBI. The bureau began investigating but ultimately didn't bring on any charges against Swartz. It was a close call but even with the FBI breathing down his neck, Swartz would continue to use the power of computing toward his political efforts. 
In late 2010, Swartz would go onto the digital repository JSTOR to download a large number of academic journals through MIT's computer network. He purchased an Acer laptop, and like a scene out of a movie, he went down to an unlocked supply closet located in the basement of one of the buildings, plugged in his PC, and left it there with an external hard drive downloading the files. Unknown to Swartz, his laptop would be found by authorities. Rather than confiscating his equipment, they installed a surveillance camera in the closet to see who was responsible. And days later, they caught him on camera. The police would do a stakeout and while he was riding his bike from MIT, police showed up to arrest him. Months went by and on July 14, 2011, federal prosecutors would indict Swartz on four felony counts. It was clearly a dark time for the young 24-year-old and although facing these severe charges, he didn't stay silent. He continued to make television appearances and focus his efforts towards a bill you may remember moving through Congress at the time titled SOPA, the Stop Online Piracy Act. Activists saw the bill as an enormous overreach and a threat to a free and open internet. Swartz would organize a petition online and after receiving thousands of signatures as well as hundreds of sites going black, SOPA ultimately did not get passed. It was a monumental win and one of the greatest displays of organized protest online that we've ever seen. Although this was an incredible accomplishment, things were still looking very grim for Swartz as his case loomed. Almost a year later from the original indictment on September 12, 2012, federal prosecutors filed a superseding indictment against Swartz, adding nine felony counts to his case. His legal defense was costing him upwards of a million dollars. Facing the possibility of him living the rest of his life in prison on January 11, 2013, Swartz would commit suicide in his Brooklyn apartment. Now, during these years, Reddit continued to grow exponentially. By early 2011, Reddit was doing a staggering 1 billion views per month and was surpassing these numbers yearly. By 2014, they had achieved 72 billion page views in just that year alone. In 2015, both Ohanian and Huffman were back at the helm following the resignation of former CEO Yishan Wong and Ellen Powell. This would mark the beginning of a new era for the former co-founders that some would say led to Reddit's downfall. One of Huffman's first moves as returning CEO would come as a shock to everyone as he removed Aaron Swartz as a founder on Reddit's founders page. Then in the following year in 2016, he was caught altering user comments that were critical of him in the r slash Donald subreddit, admitting to it by saying, our community team is pretty pissed at me, so I most assuredly won't do this again. It was around this time where Reddit censorship was picking up significantly as political posts were being banned and big time Reddit mods were censoring anything that didn't agree with the status quo. Most of the major subreddits at the time were controlled by only a handful of moderators, giving them an immense amount of power and influence. And to top it all off, in 2019, Reddit received the one $150 million investment from Tencent, the Chinese tech giant behind WeChat and League of Legends. As we know, China strictly censors all online use within the country as it aims to keep internet users from opposing the government. Companies like Spotify, Epic Games, and Snapchat have all received investments from Tencent, but users still fear the potential censorship that would inevitably come. Fast forward to 2023, originally scheduled for June 12th to the 14th, thousands of subreddits plan to protest by turning their subreddits private due to recent API changes brought on by Huff. The changes essentially made it impossible for third-party apps like Apollo to afford its operation. These apps were essential in Reddit's growth over the years as it made it easier for mods to mod and created a win-win scenario as the company didn't have to compensate them. Huffman has been dismissive of the protest as he stated in an interview with NPR, it's a small group that's very upset but I think the greater Reddit community just wants to participate with their fellow community members. It's been fascinating watching the company grow from a simple startup idea to becoming a worldwide hub for people to share ideas and find community. It serves as a place where you can find the answer to almost anything you can think of. Some say we are in the midst of watching the downfall of Reddit, but as far as the future goes, all we can do is just wait and see.